Good day everyone, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to do is just spend a little time looking at the normal 12 lead ECG. Uh, this is somewhat of a ghetto setup, I, I admit, but um, I just want to actually show you a real 12 lead, and this is a 12 lead that um, was performed on me actually today, 27 September 2012 at about uh, 4.38, 16.38 p.m. Uh, so I'll show you kind of how I look at it, and this is actually a normal 12 lead. So uh, what you want to look at first is generally when you do a 12 lead, you'll have your 12 lead, and then you'll have an associated rhythm strip printed out here, okay? So what I'll normally do is uh, we'll just go ahead and look at the rhythm strip real quick and see if we can identify any um, life-threatening or uh, grossly abnormal uh, rhythms on the rhythm strip. Uh, generally, uh, you'll monitor in lead 2. Lead 2 is a decent lead for looking at P waves, and that's nice if you can identify P waves because uh, one of the questions you always ask is, is there a P for every QRS complex? Okay, so here we have um, the rhythm strip, uh, and I've actually counted out 6 seconds, so 5 boxes a second, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds. So this is a 6 second strip, and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and ask what's the rate well, I'm going to count my QRSs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, so not quite 10, so we could say that's um, anywhere from 90 to 95 is the rate, which is normal between 60 and 100. Um, there's a P for every QRS complex, followed by a normal T wave. And the QRS complexes are normal. Um, the rhythm, we can go ahead and assess the rhythm real quick. You can use the expensive calibers or you can use the ghetto fabulous method here, which works just, just as, as easy, easily. And you don't have to blow a whole bunch of money on cool looking calibers. You usually buy something you like. Okay, so we'll draw uh, R to R. We'll measure the R to R's up and see how all the R to R's line up. So we can say that the rhythm is regular. There's a P for every QRS. The P to R interval, I'll zoom in here a little bit. The P to R interval is clearly less than 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, the QRS complex is narrow, it's about 0 0.04 to 0 0.06 seconds. Uh, the T, is, there's a return to the isoelectric line, you have a nice J point here, you have a normal T wave, okay? So we can say reasonably say that this is a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, so our rhythm strip analysis is good to go. So now what I want to do is I want to go and look at the 12 lead. And what I want to look at right now is I want to be able to identify um, the, major, the major findings, either um, ischemia, injury, or infarction. So that's ST depression, T wave inversion, ST elevation, um, or pathological Q waves. Um, in other videos, we'll talk about more advanced concepts such as looking at um, axis and bundle branch blocks and so on and so forth. So the very first thing that I do when I look at a 12 lead is I go to V1. And as a general rule, see how the QRS complexes are down in V1 and they're upright in, in V2. Um, V1 is a good indicator for me if that the QRS complex is down that generally means that I have put the leads on properly. Often what can happen is if you reverse your limb leads, you put a right on the left and a left on the right um, arm or leg, um, the QRS complex will not uh, deflect downward. So if the QRS complex doesn't deflect downward in V1, the first thing you always want to check is the limb leads and often it'll, it'll say on the printout, you know, consider limb lead reversal. Um, in this case, um, that doesn't appear to be an issue, so that's the first thing. The next thing I do is I localize changes. And if you guys remember from my prior videos, I see all leads. Um, I start at I, and that is the inferior wall. And we'll go ahead and make the inferior wall yellow. And the inferior wall includes the following leads. Leads 2, leads 3, and AVF. So let me just go ahead and put some highlight around those guys. Okay, and then I look uh, at 2, 3, AVF. You can see that my, uh, S, my ST segments are normal. Um, the T wave is up right here. It kind of goes down and it goes up. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. T wave's there, T wave's there. I don't have any T wave inversion, ST depression, or ST segment elevation. So my inferior wall looks good. And then I'm going to move on to my septal, or C, 
and we'll make that green and the septal wall are includes the leads V1 and V2 here okay and again I'll look V1 is normally down but everything deflects downward and the T wave is normal looking in both V1 and V2 so the septal wall is good and then I'll look at the anterior wall V3 here and uh, V4 over here so that's all and again I have P Q R S T. there is no ST depression or elevation T wave inversion in either of the two leads V3 and V4 so my anterior wall is good and then we'll go ahead and L the lateral wall which includes leads V5, V6, 1, and augmented vector left. So we'll just go ahead and highlight V5 and V6. Again, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, uh, good J point. T waves um, look normal, no ST depression, elevation, or presence of pathological Q waves. And we'll also look at lead uh, 1, leads 1, and augmented vector left. Again, P, Q, R, S, T, I have a good J point, return to isoelectric line, uh, no ST elevation, depression, uh, no presence of pathological Q waves. I have the same in augmented vector left. And as you guys remember, augmented vector right really doesn't look at anything important, mainly the aorta. So we typically don't look at that when we do a 12 lead analysis. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here, but that's just an introduction to uh, looking at a normal 12 lead. As always, thanks for hanging in there.